Spark Books here. Today, I'm going to explain the book, Getting to Zero, by Jason Gaddis. Take care, enjoy the book, and have a nice day. Getting to Zero, 2021, is a guide to dealing with conflict in intimate, high-stakes relationships, those with your family, good friends, and partners. It describes a process for getting to zero by achieving resolution and closure after conflict. Key idea number one, too much proximity or distance causes conflict. Have you considered how conflict starts? Conflict usually arises from feeling intimidated, a threat to your identity, property, safety, health, morals, or loved ones might be physical or emotional. Too much intimacy or distance generally causes relationship threats. Both can make you feel threatened. Too close makes you worry about being assaulted. Too far makes you worry about abandonment. A belligerent or loud person can go too close. If the other person is agitated, his body language can make him seem bigger than he is, making these actions seem aggressive. Defensiveness is automatic. However, too much distance can make you think the other person doesn't care or is leaving. When someone ignores you, slams doors, or cuts you off, this happens. In today's hyperconnected, instant messaging society, not returning calls or texts can also create too much distance. Silence, which keeps you in the dark, may be the worst. Closeness and distance are normal triggers. Staying triggered might harm your emotional and physical health. It's fixable, though. Identify your disconnectors or coping methods. These are basically four. Posturing entails attacking or blaming the other person to avoid injury. The second is collapsing. You collapse and blame yourself. The third coping strategy, seeking, involves feeling insecure and trying to reconnect with the other person, which can push them away. Avoidance, the fourth coping method, involves separating. Identifying how you detach helps you notice when you're disconnecting and take action, as well as alert loved ones to aid you amid disagreement. Key idea number two, conflict resolution begins by choosing a target. Do you have a personal conflict? Most people do, and leaving things unsettled with that individual wastes emotional energy. If so, think inside the box to reach zero. How? Get a pen and paper. Sit down and construct your first conflict box. Draw a box with nine rows to build a conflict box. Write the name of your dispute partner in the top row. Write five words to describe the person's actions in the next row. In the third row, describe how you feel about the person. Angry, annoyed, or anxious. In row four, rate those feelings from zero to ten, with zero being the baseline and ten the extreme. Add the conflict's duration on line five. If it helps, label each row. After finishing these rows, consider the person, scenario, and what you wrote. Do you want to resolve the conflict? Have you exhausted all options? If not, you may not want to encounter that person. If so, it might be wiser to get to zero with someone else first. If that person is a lost cause, be honest and choose someone you care about and want to get to zero with. After finding the proper person, add the sixth row to your dispute box. Admit your role in the conflict. Your behavior? Did you act? You shouldn't feel guilty or victimized. Simply taking ownership. Your conflict box contains all relevant information. As you approach zero, you might reflect on the conflict. You'll need it again in a few sparks. Key idea number three, your upbringing shapes your high stakes relationships. Do you worry when your partner doesn't reply back? Do you occasionally want to shut out the world and be alone, even from your loved ones? Your relational blueprint, impressions from high stakes relationships, causes these sensations. Your family, friends, and partner relationships shape your lifelong relationships. To reach zero after conflict, you must understand your relational blueprint. This understanding will help you sympathize during conflict even if you had bad role models as a child. The core of your relational blueprint is your attachment relationship, that is, your primary relationship. After confrontations, your caretakers restored your confidence as a child. At least one caregiver, who kept you alive as a newborn, was your primary relationship. Your childhood security affects your life, especially relationships. What makes a safe childhood? Secure attachment. Secure attachment relationships must meet your four relational demands. You need support, challenge, safety, and comfort. This establishes adulthood. Adults meet each other's relational needs in high-stakes partnerships. But not everyone can relate. If your caregiver was too close or too far, you probably developed an unstable bond. This can make you feel emotionally shut down, unsafe in relationships, and alienated from life. You also can't resolve high-stakes relationship problems. Relationship disconnects are now common. However, fixing issues through reconnection will lead to zero, connection. You now approach this conflict repair cycle, which goes from connection to disengagement to reconnection before returning to connection, based on how adults performed it when you were a youngster. 
Even with 500 Facebook friends, some people never feel connected. Your relational blueprint doesn't have to rule your life. By working through conflict, you may reprogram your brain to comprehend the typical conflict repair cycle and take control of your relationships. Key idea number four, conflict resolution demands understanding conflict avoidance's cost. If you avoid conflict to keep the peace, you build a battle inside yourself, says self-care expert and author Cheryl Richardson. Kids often think they have two personalities. The actual self is free, wild, and innocent, while the strategic self is constrained by perceived dangers and conforms to its environment. These two personas typically tug in different directions, causing inner tension that can later make you feel like something is wrong. Adult disagreement allows you to become more authentic. That's one incentive to confront life's conflicts. Ready to face your conflicts? Take a peek at your dispute box. Realistically, you have two possibilities to resolve your issue with that person. Option A is to be honest and reckless, which could end the relationship. Option B is business as usual, avoid disagreement and maintain peace. That may sound enticing, but if the conflict persists and you don't express yourself, it will grow too much and the truth will come out anyhow. Then you'll have three problems, the initial dispute, your inner struggle from avoiding it, and the new conflict you created. Option B, avoidance, increases conflict creep. See why in your dispute box. Skip row 7 now. In row 8, write what you fear the other person will do if you tell the truth, blame you, cut you off, or leave. Write your feelings on row 9 if these fears come true. If possible, say I'll feel hurt. Exploring your worries this way makes it clear that choosing option B, avoidance, is protecting yourself from the repercussions of speaking up. Option C, conflict resolution. You may be yourself and reconnect. Option C teaches conflict resolution, moving you from avoidance to honesty. Key idea number five, accept your own and the other person's discomfort to overcome disagreement. People don't know how to get their shit out, as the author puts it, therefore relationships fail. This was likely the case with your failed relationships, making it impossible for them to recover from even the tiniest setbacks. Most people struggle with their own discomfort. Luckily, you can learn. Determine if your discomfort is internal or external. You may assume someone else caused your feelings, but they only trigger them. You must handle such feelings. EDT is your emotional discomfort threshold. Your EDT may stay small without training or improvement. Nestor meditation, number, emotion, sensations, thinking, and resourced can boost EDT. That's how, concentrate on your suffering. Zero is your comfort zone, 10 is barely holding things together. Label your emotion, happy, sad, or outraged. Feelings, thoughts, find a place where you feel grounded and resourced, like when both feet are on the ground. Nestor meditation takes about five minutes. As you get used to your feelings, your number will get closer to zero. Learning to be comfortable with another person's dispute will help you resolve it. Consider the four relational needs from earlier. Be supportive, challenging, safe, noticed, and soothing. Offer these connectors in every conflict to get back to zero. Key idea number six, listen till they're understood. Listeners vary. During disagreement, you may rapidly get defensive. It's usually a matter of miscommunication. Step seven is taking responsibility by saying, yes, I did that. Don't defend yourself, just listen. After step eight, you speak. Do you feel understood now? If they say no, keep using the lufu. Lufu, listen until they feel understood, is the author's tool for understanding your conflict partner. Presence, awareness of your thoughts and feelings and a focus on the other person, is the first stage. Lufu's eight non-linear steps are best learned in order. Be curious about what and how the person is speaking. Be curious about the unsaid. Reflective listening follows. Restate what they said. It sounds like. The third phase is asking same page queries like, am I following you so far? Listen actively. Pressing pause interrupts the speaker so you can process what was spoken. Hold on, let me just make sure I'm with you so far. Empathizing can be difficult. Consider the other person's perspective and your role in the conflict. Add this to line 7 of your conflict box and say, I see how angry you are. Sixth, confirm what they said. That makes sense. You're acknowledging their perspective, not agreeing. However, you must comprehend. Step 7 is taking responsibility by saying, yes, I did that. Don't defend yourself. Just listen. After step eight, you speak. Do you feel understood now? If they say no, keep using the lufu. Key idea number seven, empathy solves conflicts. Studies show that 70 to 93% of communication is nonverbal. Before you speak, consider that your tone, a rolling, folding your arms, and phone use will all affect the other person. These actions will move you away from zero. 
Discuss your lessons. These can be journaled and shared. What did you learn together? Finally, agree on next steps, agreements or dispute plans. You and the other person should get zero or close to it using Lufu and share. Sit back, relax your tummy and shoulders, and check your tone before speaking. Sure, speak honestly with ownership to repair empathetically, is the author's speaking process. Lufu has eight steps. Sure too, be present like when you listened. Context first, explain why you wish to reconnect, such because the relationship is vital. Remember, you're speaking to benefit both of you. Be accountable, share your role in the conflict. Don't argue, be vulnerable. Like Lufu, the third step is empathizing with the other person. Fourth is validating others. Lufu validates the other person's feelings, thus it's comparable. Sure validates their experience. Step 5, explain how the other person's behavior affects you. Discuss their behavior. I feel words on how it influenced you. Sixth, request a behavior modification. If the person is always late, ask them to let you know in advance. Start by stating a behavior change. Discuss your lessons. These can be journaled and shared. What did you learn together? Finally, agree on next steps, agreements or dispute plans. You and the other person should get zero or close to it using Lufu and share. Key idea number eight, understanding the five most typical disagreements aids resolution. After the honeymoon period, do minor things like your partner leaving the toothpaste tube cap off start to irritate you? Worse, you discover that your ideals vary or that you dislike the person? Families, intimate friends, and workplaces experience the same. Resentments grow when you can't resolve conflict. Fortunately, most arguments can be reduced to five situations, which can help you resolve them. Surface fights begin. Fights over dishwasher stacking or not returning texts are shallow. Recognizing the real issue is crucial to resolving the problem. Second, childhood projections. Projecting is transferring a former good or bad experience to someone else. If your father always criticized you, you may imagine others do too in adulthood. Tell your partner, sometimes I project onto you that you're criticizing me. Security conflicts may occur. One or both spouses usually think the other isn't committed. This includes sex and money fights. You may feel insecure because your lover finances you. That sensation may prevent you from being intimate with your lover. You'll argue until you're both committed. Fourth, values may differ. You value monogamy, parenthood, and religion, but you see that your partner doesn't. Set the context, why you want to reconnect, and resolve to tackle these differences to overcome them. Listen, comprehend, and compromise. Fifth, changing someone or being changed might cause resentment. If you change, that person resents you. You can negotiate a better conclusion if you both state your expectations. Key idea number nine, agreements can help reconcile despite obstacles. You watched grown-ups handle conflict as a child. Instead of relying on what you learned, you must now accept responsibility for your actions. Consider your own experience. Did adults console you during conflict? Were people accountable? Who apologized? Or did you use sports, food, games, or companions to escape the pain? Many adults cope with reconnection barriers. They're ineffective and don't resolve conflict. Assigning blame, for instance, is posturing. It places dispute resolution over there. Blaming oneself is collapse. You blame yourself for everything. Take responsibility for your role in the conflict to overcome these obstacles. Excuses? Usually rushed. They don't address miscommunication between two persons. You can get to zero if you know when to apologize and it works for the other person. It should usually wait till Lufu is complete. Agreements can overcome these obstacles. These reduce reactiveness and speed up zero. Apply these to high stakes relationships immediately. A prenuptial agreement protects both parties in a divorce, and a co-parenting agreement specifies when parents can pick up and drop off their children. In case of conflict, business partners need legal agreements. Make a clear understanding agreement too. Don't argue with your partner over the agreement's meaning. Of course, you must both take responsibility for future conflicts and communicate respectfully. Get to zero by learning how to listen and speak during dispute with a high-stakes connection. Using Nestor meditation, learn how you and others react during conflict. Recognizing reconciliation hurdles and resolving disagreement through agreements will help you reach zero faster. To view more content like this, subscribe. Don't forget to like and turn on notifications. The channel really benefits from it. I appreciate you being here.